I'm really excited just to go out there and just showcase like my full ability. It's going to be a surprise, really. That's why you don't see me on social media right now because I want it to be special, you know, when I come back and I want to have people guessing. So, I mean, this, this is going to be good. First off, I appreciate you for having me at, at the crib in LA. It's been a crazy last few years, especially since we first met. Do you remember the first time we met? Yeah, I mean, you know, you have got history of NBA players, so um, recruiting me, I used to always see flyers of all the NBA players. I didn't really know about everybody yeah. that went there, but then um, I remember the first official time we really met was when he came to play uh, pickup against us uh, when I got there. And I mean, he was going at it, I just remember. Just us playing, you know, all you guys coming there, but you was the guy we had to stop the whole time, but it was good times then, so. Nah, nah that, was, that was definitely the first time we met. I remember everybody talking about, I actually knew who you was before you even, you, you even came on campus. That's the crazy thing. Coach Chilius, you know, oh, he's yeah. from that area yeah. that you guys are from. And he always used to rave about the guy back home that just is so dope, so good at hoop, and I'm gonna try to get him to come to UW and things like that. So like, when you stepped foot on campus, it was like everybody was anticipating it. Like we know this kid is special. We know what we got to do to bring him under our wings. You know, guys like Jamal Crawford and those type of dudes that they made it before me. It was like that day when you got on campus, like you could tell you was you was special. You could tell oh, this dude's an NBA player. What was it like that one year you was in college? Like, was it was it something like you dreamed of? Was it something like that was the, the, the best time of your life? Because I remember when I was in college, my three years in college it was like, I wish I can go back. Because that's when it was like, it was fun. I, not, don't get me wrong, like we're blessed to be in this situation, but as you know, it's more of a business than, than going out there and having fun and, and appreciating it. But like college for me was like, the dopest time. No, I definitely had, college was by far the best time in like, my life. I mean, just being able to go there, really not to worry about paying bills and, and all that, but just having fun. And I think what made it that was like the people I was surrounded by, like you guys coming back, like playing pickup with us. Like, I don't think like you hear about all the big schools, but we had like a lot of pros. Like you said, Brandon Roy, you, mm -hmm. Jamal, you know, Spencer, you can name them all, like come back and hoop and actually like kick it with us. It was, it was like dope. It felt like a different culture out there. So, I mean, just doing that and then like my teammates were just fun. Like you yeah. really joke all day, you know, didn't really have to worry about like beefing with anybody or having an argument with everybody. Everybody was on the same page. So it was, it was just fun. So, I mean, definitely. And I, I think a big ups to that is Coach Romar too, just keeping oh, everybody man. together, you man. know, the way he is. I know he coached you too. So it was just like, the, the the way he is, the dude he is, the man he is, everything. It was. I try to explain to people like what type of like person Coach Rowe yeah. is. Like he, and it's hard to explain just because you don't understand him until you're with him mm -hmm. every day. Like he's he's more of a father figure than than a coach. Yeah. You know how college is. Like they use you until they can't they use can. you no more, and then you you go on and they get another kid. Yep. With Coach Romar, that was like something that that I cherish forever. Like, he's someone I can call on no matter what the situation is, no matter what I'm going through in life. It doesn't even have to be about basketball. And I feel like that's what made players and, and high school players, recruits gravitate to him. Because, I mean, I know in my situation, he didn't promise me anything. Yeah. He didn't promise me I was gonna start, I was gonna go to the NBA, mm -hmm. none of that. He just, he really like helped me go into a young man 18, 19 years old going into college and learning how to take care of my responsibilities. And I know you were only there for one year, but can you explain to like, to the people how, how big Coach Romar was an influence in your life, not just as a basketball player, but, nah. but, but off the court as well. Romar's big, you know, going so far, you know, I live in DC, so going all the way across to Washington, like it was, it was crazy, but like, it was more so he cared about like off the court. He didn't really care about on the court, he was like, you gotta make sure your schoolwork's done. You gotta make sure you're doing this, that, and the third. So like, I felt like you can talk to him about anything. You feel like he can help you with almost anything. And then also he's a hooper too. So he knows, <laughs> yeah. he knows what it is. For so sure. like, most people don't know, like he comes in practice and he's gonna talk trash to you, uh, like yeah. shooting everything. Throughout that year, when did you know, like there's a good chance you can be the number one pick? Midway through season, you see all the mock drafts. It's hard not to look at it, but I was consistently like the number one 
uh, mock draft like pick. So I'm like, wow, this isn't changing. Like maybe I do have a chance to yeah. actually do it. So like I was just thinking like that gave me more confidence. Like just don't drop. Draft day. Let's talk about draft day. As you know, I was the last pick. Yep. So like that day felt like it was 72 hours and not 24. So like it was, it was a long day for me. And with mine was it was crazy because I actually went to UW when the draft was on. My my family was was back at my apartment having a, like a little draft get together party, and I was with my teammates at UW. We were shooting around just trying to get my mind off things. The draft starts. Picks keep going. It's the end of the first round, the middle of the second round. And I remember my mom had called me and was like, it was like around the 45th, 45th to 50th pick. And she's like, are you all right? I'm like, I mean, I'm good, but I'm like, I'm worried. Cause I, I never, that never was in my head that I would not get picked. And then, and then I remember she said, she said, guys got you. Like, don't, don't even worry about it. Like, like you're going to be fine. And then I remember getting that call from my agent. He was like, if you're still on the board, Sacramento's going to choose you with the last pick. And I remember that feeling like it was so much emotion. Like I didn't care if I was the first or the last yeah. pick because my whole life I always asked, I just want an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not tripping. To say that, like my draft day was was way different than yours. Like how was how was like being in the green room and like like experience knowing that you were, I mean, more than likely you knew you were the number one pick. But like, how was that day? Like, was it? Was it everything you dreamed of or was it like, was it like? <laughs> it was, it was long. It was, it's way more than you see on TV. Yeah. So like me just looking at the drafts before, I'm just looking like, wow, well, to just go to the green room, you know, get drafted, walk across stage. That's all you really see. But actually being there, it was like, I was just happy the whole time. But it was so much going on where you had to meet people, this, that, and the third. But it was, it was a dope process. Just like, it kind of give you like a, a welcome to the NBA moment. Like you, yeah. you, you, you go to meetings, you gotta be dressed up a certain way. Um, a little bit of everything. But once that, that draft day came the night before, I couldn't really sleep. I was just like, tomorrow's the draft, you know, my hat, my guy's there. So we just in there playing 2K, just chilling, like having a good time. Like just, like you said, trying to take your mind off yeah. of it. But that morning, I just had a smile on my face the whole day, you know, just trying to figure out how I'm gonna walk across stage, like how I'm gonna adapt. The commissioner up, you know, yeah. he got to think about all those things. I'm just like, man, you know, me, I'm clumsy. I'm like, yo, just don't trip across the <laughs> stage. I'm like, just don't trip. So that day didn't really hit me. Like when they called my name, I was just like, it was still like bubbles in my stomach when it was like the, with the first pick. I, I didn't know if they didn't call my name or somebody else. And when I, when I heard my name, I was just like, wow, like it happened. And then I just had to worry about walking across the uh, stage, yeah. not tripping. Yeah. But I'm thinking I'm gonna be the first one out. Like I'm gonna go to get to enjoy my family, but I end up being like the last one to leave. And once you go in the back, you gotta do all the photos. But it was just like a dope process. After that, you just got relief. Like you just you back to work now. Nah, that yeah. was the whole thing. It yeah. felt like when you got drafted, the whole city, the whole state of Washington yeah, got drafted. It was crazy. One. Like yeah. that's how that's how much support you had in that area. So 2011, that was my rookie year. Crazy thing about that is like we had an NBA lockout. There was no like summer league. There was no, I get to work out with coaches and figure the NBA game out. It was just like, you're thrown in there and go figure it out. I know you didn't play a lot of games, but you were still, you're still an NBA player. You still yeah. go, you still work out each and every day. You still travel. Like what was your biggest thing in, in your rookie year that you learned? Um, it could be on the court, off the court. Yeah. Um, it could be, it could be anything. I think I learned more than most rookies learned just because of the stuff I went through with injury and everything like that. But I think I had great vets who who taught me like the system quick. Most stories I hear like most rookies get left on their own because it's vets and you know they got their business to take care of. But with me, I felt like we were all connected. Like when we were going to road, we would go out to eat and just chat it up, which like. I, I used to text like my friends on the other team, like, yo, do y'all like go out to eat? And like, I'm like, nah, yeah. you go eat on your own. And yeah. I'm like, so it was, it was just dope. Dude. So it just made you feel more special. From the outside looking in, it looks like a college team. Mm -hmm. Like you guys all cheer for each other. You guys are, are happy with, with everybody's success. Like if you could give a recap of this whole season from training camp to the end of the season where you guys surprised probably the whole NBA, you guys surprised the world. Coming to training camp, 
uh, it was dope just to like compete. We really just started by playing like pickup and like you can see how talented the team was because like everybody had like something that that you like needed to have a great team. Yeah. So it was just like JJ, like you would look at him as a shooter and be like, "Dang, we got somebody can like really like make a shot like yeah. whenever we <laughs> need it." So it was just like dope. And then you got a big man, you got Joe, like you like. You see how talented he is, what he does. You're like, wow. And then you got a six ten point guard, you know, that can pass, you know. So it was just crazy to see that for me, like, just seeing all of it. And I know, like, them thinking the same thing, like, yo, like, we fit each other perfect. Like, yeah. everybody fits each other. But the way we competed, I think, was the biggest thing. Like, I think the biggest thing that we thought about was our fan, our fan base, you know. We got a lot of people that, that come to Philly, like, just grind me. Like, they love basketball. So yeah. we, we wanted to make them happy, first of all. But... Just coming in, our only goal was to play, like make the playoffs, and it just seemed like every goal we made, we like kept making it, yeah. so we had to make a new one. We don't know how we was doing it, but like it was just like the whole season, we always pushed each other, and we was like, we're not gonna let each other down, we're not gonna let anybody slack, and it was just dope, like to see everybody just working hard together to for one goal. Like everybody knew their role, nobody was like mad, somebody was playing more than them, so like it was just like you had to buy in really, because you would be the only one like left out being that guy. Everybody knows you you was injured for the most part, but like how you handled that whole situation was like beyond beyond you being how old you are. Mm -hmm. What can you like finally say with your own words like about that, not even having to explain the injury, yeah. but like, okay, let's look past that. I'm, I'm good now. Definitely. I mean, it was a lot of things going on about changing shots and all this and there, but um, it was an injury there, and uh, for me, I'm a hooper, so I was like, man, this ain't gonna stop me. So once I realized I really couldn't do stuff to my full capacity, I was like, it really is something, so I had to find out what it was, and, and we did that throughout the season. It took a long time, which people really didn't understand. They thought, like, man, you're just being soft, but yeah. I mean, it was really an injury, and now uh, I got a chance to just sit down and, and, and pick apart all these doctors. We, we figured it out, and um, I've been back to work this summer and it, and everything's back to even better than what it was. So right now, I mean, I'm I'm really excited just to go out there and just showcase like my full ability. But it's it, it's gonna be a surprise, really. That's why you don't see me on social media right now. You know, posting videos of me shooting and everything because I wanted to be special. You know, when I come back and I want to have people guessing. So I mean, this this is gonna be good. Yeah, because it's big, like. Just a year ago, you was one of the best shooters in the world mm -hmm. in college. Like, but they forget that so yep. fast just Quick. because somebody got injured. With the injury and all the stuff that you were going through this year, how did you just mentally be able to focus and be able to just go about being the number one pick, being hurt and being counted out? Stuff like on the internet never really got to me, but just to see like reporters and stuff that like talk so highly, like you said, and then. One moment when, when they don't go their way, just talk down and it was just like, all right, cool, that's another people that doubted me, so just gotta go against them too. So I give it all all the credit to like myself first, but like my mom and sister just being there, just making sure I, I knew that I got drafted, no one picked for a reason. And then my teammates just being there, just like supporting me really, just never really like leaving me out of anything and just like letting me know I can still hoop. It was times I came in, and, I mean, I would, I would kill practice and they was they would tell me like, you know, today was like, you, you had a great day. And I would just feel like, man, like you guys don't know, like it's not the same, but it, it, it all played a role in just like the love I have for the game. Just knowing like, as long as I work hard, I know everything else is gonna take care of itself. I mean, this grind and this 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 NBA is, is a what have you done for me lately business. As you know, like these last 16 months for me has been like a roller coaster. I mean, mentally, I'm good because I'm I'm built for this. Like, like I don't I don't ever get too high or get too low. But I mean, it does take a toll on you, though. Like, I'm the same player I was last year. The situation just changed, and I got hurt. You can't control nobody getting hurt. Yeah. Like that just happens. That's that's just what it is. But the negativity that it brought with the situation I was in was the part that hurt the most. And I seen that from afar with your situation. Like, dang, like I, I can shoot. I just injured my damn shoulder. Yeah, for sure. So you try to injure your shoulder and be able to yeah, shoot, shoot at a high level. Yeah. Like, but they, they don't give you that, like there's there's never an excuse or there's never yeah, like, sure. okay, let me let me get healthy. And, and I know I keep saying it, but I was proud of how you handle it because it's like, you're going to keep pushing no matter what. So this coming up year is, is, is definitely an exciting year. 
Um, expectations are high for the Philadelphia 76ers, but I know the world wants to know, what are your personal goals for this coming year? What are your expectations and what are you looking to, to show the world that what you bring to the table and why you were the number one pick? Uh, for me, really, I mean, first of all, my goals are just to, to have a great year, really. Sixer fans are going to get somebody that's going to come in and play hard. I mean, I think I'm going to be that guy that's going to be able to create create shots for himself and his teammates. I mean, that guy at the end of the game when you need a bucket, you don't really have to call a play. I mean, I'm going to get out there on defense. As most people don't know, like, I like to block shots, so I'm going to be a, a big point guard out there. So, I mean, just come in just just prove myself for I me. Mean, just show why I belong to stay in the league, really. Exactly. That's, that's really it. I think like everybody, like Joel, Ben, we're all out here in LA, like working. We talk to each other, like we talk to everybody. But like, we're really, really excited. Like everybody feels like they've gotten better. They worked on something. And like, we're excited to come back and like just live up to what we did last year. We know we had a high year last year. So we got to like live up to it again. So are you guys thinking a championship? Not for sure. Most of us as players, we're, we're aiming for the championship. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially, I mean, with LeBron coming yeah. west, that yeah, opens yeah. up. Yeah, it opens up a lot. Opportunity yeah. for for other teams. We're gonna really, be playing against Boston a lot. That's the that's the, that's, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the matchup. Yeah, that's gonna be the the rivalry right there. You can just see it in the playoffs. Yeah. That like definitely playing us now. Playing in Boston is is tough to play in Boston. Then when you go play in Philly, it's tough. It's tough yeah. to play in Philly. So for like sure. those teams, it seems like. Like, you guys are going to be battling for years to come, so it's going to be, the NBA is going to be exciting. You know, I'm going to always be rooting for you. I mean, other than when we play each other, um, we're going to be battling, yeah. and, and it's going to be all love before the game and then after the game. But throughout the game, you know, I'm, we're not friends, and that's just sure. how, it, how it's always going to be. But I know you're going to do special things in this league, and I'm, I know yeah. you're going to come back and show sure. the world again what you're about. I just want to say thank you for coming through. You know, it's always been a pleasure to hang out with each other. You know, U Dub to to NBA life, uh, it's been great. I'm just real excited to go yeah, out there. So that's big. It's happy.